In this lecture, we are going to look at the backup and restore features in DynamoDB. It's very easy to create backups in DynamoDB and restore process is equally easy as well. So let's take a look. Now backups are automatically encrypted, they are cataloged and they are easily discoverable. And we are going to see that in a while. Backups are highly scalable. What that means is you can create or retain as many backups for your tables of any size. So there are no restrictions here backup operations complete in seconds and it doesn't take long and also the backups are consistent across thousands of partitions within seconds and backup process does not consume any of the provision capacity of your table so this is really a good thing so uh, creating a backup does not cost you money of course, storing a backup will cost you money, but creating it will not consume any provision capacity. So backup process does not affect your table performance or its availability. And even if you delete the table, backups will still be retained. And you can, of course, delete backups if you like. Now you can backup your tables to the same region as the original table, but when you restore, you can restore it to the same region or to a different region. So cross region restoration is possible. Now this backups feature is integrated with the AWS backup service. So you can use this AWS backup service to create periodic backups of your DynamoDB table this is really handy and a very efficient or uh, I should say operationally efficient way to manage your backups. When the AWS backup service was not available, the only option was to create a Lambda function and schedule it using CloudWatch triggers to take backups. But now you can simply use the AWS backup service instead and that's much more efficient than using a Lambda function. Now, the important thing to note here is when you restore a DynamoDB table from a backup, the backup can only be done to a new table. That means you have to provide a new name to your table. And if you want to retain the original table name, of course, the workaround is to delete the table first before running your restore operation. But remember that restore operation is not immediate it takes a long time depending on the size of your table data and you can use IAM policies for access control for your backups now when you talk about backups DynamoDB provides two types of backups on-demand backup and restore and continuous backup with PITR on-demand backup and restore means you simply go into the console and create a backup or use the API or CLI operations to create a backup of your DynamoDB table while continuous backups with PITR is something that you enable in your DynamoDB console. So once you enable continuous backups with PITR, you can restore your table data to any second in the past 35 days. So restore table gets the same provision capacity as the original table at the time of backup. So whatever the capacity of the table was at the time of backup, that capacity will be applied to the restore table. When you use PITR, the RPO is approximately five minutes. Uh, what this means is when you enable your continuous backups with PITR, the latest restorable time can be at least five minutes in the past. So once you start using it, of course, you can restore to any second uh, in the past 35 days, but the maximum amount of data loss that would be about five minutes. RPO is recovery point objective. So what it designates is the amount of time of your data loss. So when you say that RPO is about five minutes, it simply means that you can lose maximum of five minutes of data. Now, RTO can be longer. Now, RTO is recovery time objective. So this is the amount of time it takes for DynamoDB to restore your data to a new table. So the PITR or even the on-demand backups are always restored to a new table. The restore operation always takes long Longer depending on the size of your data so RTO or recovery time objective will be longer now RTO corresponds to the amount of time it takes for restore process all right 
Now, when you run a restore operation, what are the things that get restored? First, your table data is restored, your global and local secondary indexes get restored, and if you don't want the GSIs or LSIs to be restored, you can choose the option to restore without the secondary indexes. And the encryption settings also get restored to the original uh, configuration, and you can change that configuration when running the restore operation. Then the provision capacity that was recorded at the time of the backup will be applied to your table, and you can change it after the restore process is done. The billing mode will also have the same value that was there at the time of backup. So if you had provision capacity, then that will be applied to your new table. Or if you used uh, on-demand mode, then the new table will be created with the on-demand mode. Of course, you can change this after the restore process is complete. Now, there are certain things that do not get restored and you have to manually set them up and you should really know what all these configuration options are. From the examination perspective, you might have a question that asks you something around this. So what doesn't get restored or what is that you have to manually set up? First, the auto scaling policies and the IAM policies, you have to apply them after your table gets created. Then the CloudWatch metrics and alarms do not get restored. You have to create them. The DynamoDB stream and TTL settings also do not get restored. We are going to talk about stream and TTL in a while. The tags that you have applied to your table do not get restored. So these are the things that you have to set up manually after your table gets restored. Now let's go into a demo and see how easy it is to create a backup and restore from the backup as well.